Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. This is my son Ben and today we have a live stream, a live stream for Isla whiskies. Yes, we are uh, continuing with our live stream series of the regions and last time we talked about the Highlands region and today we're having the Isla region. And the Isla region, we're gonna try three of their malls. And today will be hmm, a very much about the yeah, but the peat and the production and how different methods are used to put the peat, yeah, the peat smoke into the barley, yeah. And yeah, anything about the the three two bottlings? Yeah, um, uh, I found it really difficult how to bring them in sequence. So we decided to have uh, two of the well famous and quite popular whiskies from Isla, Artbeck ten years old and the Lagavulin sixteen years of age. The Lagavulin sixteen years of age is on the market since. 1989 and the Artback 10 years was published in this strength with 46% ABV in 1999. <clears throat> so the Lagavulin is 10 years older on the market, but the Artback had a an older version before the temporary closure of the distillery with only 40% ABV. Now today we have 46% ABV. And there's a newcomer, the Port Charlotte which comes from the Brugletti distillery and uh, it's 10 years of age, 50% ABV and this is quite a new one. I think the 10 year old is on the market for five to seven years, something like that, mm -hmm. not longer because Brugletti opened again in 2000 and then it took a few years until they started with a very peaty production mm -hmm. and uh, well, so those are the three. We are tasting and the sequence was quite difficult for me. Um, I knew that the 16-year-old Lagavulin is quite massive, so I put it last. And uh, the art bag I knew for its sweetness, uh, so I took it at first. And I'm not quite sure if the Port Charlotte, 10 years old, fits in the middle. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Um, the first question, is there still a lot of peat on Isla? Yes, uh, the peat cutting is quite extensive for the Iliachs, the, the guys at the island who still uh, heat their homes with peat and the distilleries. Um, but um, the peat harvesting, if you compare the peat that is burned for the whiskey and you compare it to the main consumer, consumer of peat, then it's draft, it's dwarfed, uh, that's the word, dwarfed by the uh, gardening industry. So peating, peat used in gardening is really, really using up peat and not the, um, the whiskey. And most of the peat cutting in Scotland is illegal for gardening only still allowed for whiskey and for the rare occasional Iliach that is, nobody likes to do that because it's, it's hard really labor. hard <laughs> labor and peat is not as good as wood. It just doesn't burn that well. It produces a lot of smoke and you get a really smoky home and all your neighbors are really not that, <laughs> happy, with that. happy with you when you burn <laughs> peat. So yes, there is still a lot of peat. Um, if you look to Eastern Europe, um, they are producing a lot for the gardening industry. That is really a uh, problem for um, the, but, the moors. But to come, come back to, to Scotland as a whole, uh, there are calculations and every year a millimeter of peat is added to the mosses. And uh, well, that's more than the whiskey industry takes. Mm -hmm. So we do not have a loss in peat. We have still... Uh, an increase in peat. Yeah, peat is renewable. You have one millimeter per year, so yeah. <laughs> thousand years for one meter. So yeah, but if you have the the, the size of Scotland and, and the moors, there's a lot of peat growing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's renewable. It it will not run out for the whiskey industry. 
but also the gardening when you go to the gardening center and you get a bit of peat maybe you shouldn't do that there are alternatives you can use yeah, bark, uh, but probably uh, bark. yeah bark or something else i'm not that much of a gardening guy but uh the the industry for growing tomatoes uses a lot of peat as well so yeah. Anyway, let's not talk about that. We're talking about the region. So let's have a look where we find Isla. And here we see the region of Scotland, the regions of Scotland. And today we see the region north of, uh, of Ireland. On the very bottom left, there is Ireland. And to the right, we have the Highlands. And that little thing that's going out of the Highlands to the very south, that's the Isle of uh, the, the peninsula of Kintyre. And right next to it is Isla. Let's have a look how Isla looks like. To the right, we have Kintyre and the yellow one is Isla. So it's a little U-shaped and upside down, uh, upside down U-shaped. Mm -hmm. And in the, yeah, in the bottom of the U, or the top, because it's upside down, there is the city of Beaumont. And Beaumont is the biggest city there with the police station and the church. bath and the <laughs> church. And they have a round church. That's cool. You can read up on that. That's really a very interesting church. And uh, yeah. There's no corner for the devil in it. Yes. So <laughs> the devil can't hide. Um, so there are 3,228 inhabitants according to the census in 2011 so there might be more there might be less and we have nine active distilleries still there is one more coming yep in the next year we will have the uh, distillery of port ellen coming back it will be reopened and everybody says oh yeah there's so many distilleries growing on isla Actually, there are 19 closed or demolished distilleries. So there have been a lot more distilleries on Isla. Yeah, sure. Back in the day, the distillery was a much smaller investment or a much smaller yeah, venture than today. So there were a lot of small stills going around. Okay, um, how do you get to Isla? You can either fly from, uh, from Glasgow with a little propeller um, or you can actually go by ferry. And um, that's the classic way. That's the classic way. It goes from Kenner Craig and the ferry is quite extensive. Um, can we have the picture of ferry? And um, yeah, that's the ferry. I didn't pick, take this picture. You took this picture. I took then. that picture in 1995 mm -hmm. and you can see how why the whiskey is smoky on Isla. <laughs> <laughs> this is not why the whiskey is smoky. No. Yeah. I think they have a new ferry. I, I yes, went there in yes. 2011. Definitely. But if you ever go to, um, to Isla with a ferry, be careful. It's not going all the time. Not every ferry is leaving because if there's bad weather, then the ferry is not leaving. So I had to um, yeah, wait another night stay in Kenna Craig and uh, take the ferry in the next morning at seven o'clock. And when you go there, you can either go to Port Escape or to Port Ellen. Usually you go to Port Ellen and then you drive by the south coast of the island. And when you drive past this, you come to the first distillery we're trying today. And that is the distillery of Artbag. Yeah, it looks kind of like that. This is taken from a helicopter. It was your photo as well? Yeah, so I was there in 2013 and we flew over from uh, from Loch Lomond from the hotel with three helicopters and landed rest just in the distillery. You can see on the right hand side of the picture uh, one of those uh, helicopters and I asked the pilot to take another round for having that picture. Uh, yeah, wonderful distillery. This is the most eastern, southeastern distillery. Then the next one, uh, this will be Lagavulin, and the one very close to Port Ellen then is Lefroig. So we have on the island, uh, south coast, in the future Port Ellen as first, then Lefroig, then Lagavulin, and Artbeck as the most southeasterly point. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the Artbeck 10 then. <clears throat> so yeah. it's a it's a whiskey ten years old, um, no color, no chill filtration, forty six percent, forty six percent, and it was matured and only in ex bourbon casks. Yeah, first and second fill at least. 
And this one yeah, is it's a mixture between first and second yeah. film. This one is already very smoky on the cork. Fun fact: uh, I've I've talked to Mickey Hads at the distillery of Artback, and I have actually t already talked to the new distillery manager <laughs> of Artback, um, a guy. Um, yeah, he he worked at the Port Allen Maltings, and he is really. He's an inhabitant of Isla and he knows a lot about whiskey. Really? And he's a really, really nice dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what do you have in your nose? Oh, massive. I have to take that away. So this one is a massive peat smoke. Not medicinal, but bonfire smoke with a little sweetness in the back and some citrus notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is really, uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> not German, English. <laughs> it's a, it's a very fresh and, uh, and, and herby whiskey. It's, it's strange to say, but it's it's not mm, yeah it's it's very fresh combined with the smoke it it's really a a little bit weird because of that it's not as muffy and puffy as the other ones it's it's a refreshingly little bit of marine maritime notes whiskey with a with a with an emphasis on smoke and the smoke has a bit of a a bonfire, a little bit of ash tone to it. It really reminds me of, um, I'm a, a new owner of a stove and that mm -hmm. one time when that, that one piece of wood didn't burn all the way through and I found it the next morning, it really reminds me a little bit of that. A mixture of unburned wood and a little bit of ash. Mm -hmm. So it's a massive smell on that. Then afterwards, there's some some note of the near sea, a mm -hmm. little bit of that. It's uh, quite reasonable priced, around forty euros, dollars, pounds. So the prices, the price is quite different in different markets I've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cheers, cheers. Mm -hmm. Started <laughs> in the start, it's quite sweet, mm -hmm. and uh, then it's stronger, it brings the cask a little spicy, full rounded in my mouth. The peat smoke is cladding the inside of my mouth, and I well, this is the second sip I have today. Of this one and now it's really complex harmonizing uh, completely filling my mouth mm -hmm. the aftertaste mm -hmm. gentle good mm. it's a little <clears throat> bit sweet but mm, it also has a lot of oak and a little of spiciness a little peppery note in there as well and i didn't have in the nose so there's a bit of a, a discrepancy in between the smell and the taste and it's well bodied, doesn't have any edges, but it's not really smooth either. Mm, I like it. Mm. So I, I had two guys in the chat. Uh, sweetness, a lot of peat, glowing bonfire and fruity mm -hmm. ash. Mm, I like it. Now we have a few guys who already have the whiskeys on hand when we have the ice cream. So I really like that too, to see, to, to feel the, the trying together with the, uh, yeah with uh, the viewers. How does it compare to the Lefroic 10? Well, the Lefroic 10 has only 40%, so it's not that strong uh, in your mouth. Uh, but the Lefroic has more uh, medicinal notes in it. It's, it's hospital stinky, uh, and uh, the art bag is more bonfire, bonfire at the sea. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more, more gentle in that kind. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, you don't know. 
Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I want to continue with my tour a little bit. We've talked about Isla, and now I want to talk about what makes these whiskies so smoky. And the answer is peat. And here we see the natural habitat of peat. Um, it's um, a moor, so there is a lot of water in the ground, so the the oxygen from the air can't get into the ground. Yes, the oxygen usually gets into the ground, but the water that is in, in this um, region in the moors prevents the oxygen from going there, so you have an an anaerobic, anaerobic, an, anaerobic, an, mm -hmm. I don't know how yeah. to say in English, mm -hmm. anaerobic, um, uh, an environment without oxygen. So it actually uh, can't rot. So it actually becomes dirt without rotting. And you see at the top there you still have roots and at the bottom you have something that has the consistency of butter and that is yeah black or brown. And that is actually the peat, and that's actually a precursor to brown coal, and later black coal. Yeah, so um, you're the expert on, on getting that stuff <laughs> from the ground. How do you do that? Yeah, <laughs> if you see me together with Nikki Herz, we went up to uh, the Loch Ariknam Beist, where a famous whiskey from Ardbeck is was named by, and uh, there, we just removed uh, the top grass uh, from the peat. You can see it on the right-hand side of the picture, those cut pieces of the grass. And then you come to the top layer of the peat, and there you can see those roots, which look very uh, light brownish. And then going down, what I have, this briquette I have on my spade, uh, gets darker and darker to the bottom and that thing is really heavy and you see my underarm resting on my knee <laughs> uh, you need that uh, <laughs> uh, otherwise it's a hard labor and if you dug peat for a day uh, then you're really done you're you're finished and Mickey Hatz uh, explained how in former times uh, he now has retired, so he's just for a long time on Isla. Uh, what people have dug out of of this soil, uh, and what that was for a hard labor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. How how far do you cut peat per day? Uh, as far as one stone throw, you take a, a hip flask of whiskey and you throw it. And no, don't when throw you a hip flask full of whiskey. <laughs> and when you reach the hip flask, you're allowed to drink it and you're allowed to go home. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> so you, you have an incentive to cut the peat to... I'm very not end. very good at throwing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So in here you see uh, those briquettes um, put in piles so that the water runs out. The briquettes are that heavy because they are full of water. And as soon as you put it uh, on those piles, then the water runs out of them and they becoming lighter, very light in the end. And uh, the surface begins to dry and gets really hard. So when it rains on that, they will not uh, soak up. So you don't need to have uh, some plastic or some uh, things above them to prevent them from the moisture of the rain. No, they, you don't need that in summer. And uh, when they are dry, then people come and collect. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody got a, a license for a special cut. And all Elachs have the right to cut peat for their own purposes. Yeah, for their own heatings. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you look at the peat, um, it's different to what Horst, when you cut it, you have like, I don't know, three, four foot down there. And uh, so it's one meter, a bit more, one meter fifty. In that uh, region, there are regions where yeah. the peat is much thicker. Much thicker. Mm -hmm. But at, um, at where we cut the peat, we have about one meter, or you can cut one meter with that old mm -hmm. uh, method. And when you see it, at the top, it looks like that. And at the bottom, I told you that brown butter. So that's how the, the peat looks at the top. And these roots have a really a strong influence on the flavor of the smoke that goes into the whiskey. So the, actually the flavor in the whiskeys differ 
also from how it's matured and how it's distilled, but also with what kind of peat you use. And now we are going to the next distillery, and that is Bruchladi. This is and a picture from Christmas. Yeah. They so, built a Christmas tree out of chaos. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. So uh, if you remember the, the map that I had, and if you go on the other side of the island, on the west side, and then you have the Bruchladi distillery. And at the Bruchladi distillery, you have three brands being made, or now four if you count the gin. And uh, the first one is the Bruchladi. Um, I can show you uh, uh, here. That's the Bruchladi. Hmm? And in Gaelic, you say it Bruchladi. That's the non-peated whiskey from the Bruchladi distillery. So this had been the Isla Barley, mm -hmm. Isla Barley. So that means that the barley comes only from Isla. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so it has no peat smoke in it. The next one the brand that we're going to try today is the Port Charlotte, which has a a strong peat with forty ppm, which is fairly similar to the other two that we're having today. And then there is the Octomore. These two bottles back in the back there, uh, horse is pointing to them. Uh, they have a very, very, very high uh, PPM content. So the parts per million, the phenols that are making the whiskey smoky. And yeah, I'm gonna tell you later how you reach these levels of peat smoke. But first, let's try the portrait. Yeah, there's uh, Patrick Osberg, Missing Mark Renier, the face of Brugiletti. First, uh, Brugiletti, you write it different. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Mark Renier, uh, he was one of the guys uh, who revived Brugiletti after they uh, were mothballed from 1994 until 2000. Uh, then they bought it from Inverhaas Distillers. Uh, which then was already overtaken by White and McKay, I think. And then after some years, they sold it again and Marc Renier got the money and off. And today he's doing Irish whiskey as well as Caribbean rum. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so the Port Charlotte is the smoky one. Uh, if you would have the Brickletti in between here, um, the sequence, it wouldn't fit. So, <laughs> so you, you have to have the... Uh, smoky uh, version of Brugnetti, this port salad, and it's named by a town uh, and an old distillery which was in that town uh, just a few miles uh, going southwest from the Brugnetti distillery. And there you have, I think when I was there, there was still a supermarket uh, in one of the old uh, uh, buildings from Brugnetti, uh, from Port Charlotte. And there are still some warehouses on top of a small hill uh, from Port Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So they revived that old uh, whiskey inside the Brick Lady distillery. Wow. So be careful with this one. It has 50% ABV. And for beginners, it might be too much. So be careful. Uh, you might add a few drops of water. Don't put too many in them uh, because uh, otherwise it will water down and might not uh, taste as you expect. So this one is citrus notes as well, but this time a little sweeter, a little bit more like tangerines. And then our floral notes behind, like how it's called, thyme, thymian. Time, I think. Time, yeah. yeah. And some heather, yeah. And a little bit of sea spray, the beach, rotten seagrass. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. For me, also unexpectedly fresh. Usually, I consider eyelime malts and heavy peated malts more of that damp, strong, leathery type. This one has, as you said, these herbs, the thyme, the a little bit of a citrus smell as well going on. Mm. But also really, really smoky. I like it. Mm. Yeah, cheers. 
Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Intense, massive, the alcohol pushes into your mouth and then you have the juice of tangerines. Then the cask come up, a uh, little spiciness from the cask and the Port Charlotte has first and second fill American oak cask as well as French casks, reused French casks. So mm -hmm. there is a special cask note in it from this, this, these French limousine casks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You realize in, in this one, there's something else there and there is more in there because of that cask influence. The other one was straightforward, fresh, and now I had the fresh smell, but I didn't have Mm, that much of a freshness you realize the French wine cars do have an influence it's more round you do have a little bit of berries in there still very much on the herb side with a little bit of a citrus note as well and mm, a little bit of an oak note as well I like it I like the Port Charlie so I have two notes up there in the uh, chat mm. Mr. India Horst you didn't smell the cork this time you always do in fact, I picked that from you. Yeah, um, typically you do that because there are times where you have bad corks and if you smell this TCA, uh, then you, you know the, either the, the wine bottle or the whiskey bottle is, is really bad. So I smell on that because I had done that an hour ago. Uh, so I omitted it this time. Yeah, um, usually we do the English videos first and then the German videos. But due to the time zones, when we go live, um, we actually do the Germans first because here it's evening and when we send it live to America and all the other Western, more Western countries, it's better for having yeah. more people on because but, of but, but we know the time it's, zones. It's all around the globe. So that's yeah. why he didn't, he smelled it in the German taste. <laughs> and the next, what was from James Bond 008, doesn't smell that smoky. Uh, well, uh, I have that feeling as well. So mm -hmm. this, the smoke doesn't come out that much. If you add a few drops of water, if I did what I did an hour ago, uh, the smell of smoke appears a lot, but the taste reduces a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's quite difficult if you want to have uh, all the smell of, of smoke or if you want to have the, the full, full taste. Mm -hmm. There are a lot, lot of whiskies that uh, hide their peat smokiness in the smell. There are some whiskies that you really don't smell the peat smokiness. And you think, oh, okay, maybe it's not a smoky whiskey. And you have it in your mouth and it just hits you with a lot of peat smoke. So the peat smoke can be tricky in the smell. Mm -hmm. some, sometimes it really just doesn't come out that big. Yeah, the 50%, they are really have heavy this one yeah mm -hmm. massive it's massive yeah mm -hmm. good so aftertaste is much longer yes i'm not quite sure if i have the same same rating as i had in the german take <laughs> okay so i'm getting hungry me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. i'm not a fan of of smoke flavor uh, Mark P. Uh, Stengel, well, me too. Um, this sounds weird in the moment. Uh, I like the smoke up to a certain level. And if I'm going over that level, like these two guys over here, <laughs> then whoa, I don't like them. So whenever uh, some whiskey says, well, I have extreme smokiness in it i give the bottle to ben <laughs> <laughs> but these one in the just in the middle isla south coast uh, that's just what i like mm -hmm. so yes um i want to continue a bit with the story about the peat so we have seen where the peat grows but now how does the peat get into the whiskey first of all the peat gets collected in yeah, the peat storage. And there was a question, does the peat come from Isla or does it come from the mainland? 
and I would say such and such. Um, I think for the big production, it comes from the mainland, but the small productions, most of the distilleries have a bit of a, a show production of the old mm -hmm. way that comes from the Isle of Isla. So there are peat cutting areas for Ardbeg, for Lafroig, and for Kilchoman. So everybody who still does have a bit of a peat uh, smoking locally, then they get the peat from Isla. But the bigger the distilleries, uh, the less yeah. peat yeah. they produce themselves. Mm -hmm. But in the big industrial production, you have a lot of peat. It is used very, very efficiently. So they use per malt, they produce, uh, use less of the the peat and then the small production but in total number they have a lot of peat if you look at this picture yeah that's a lot of peat and how do you produce the smoke then you have to burn it in a stove so you light it on fire and uh here you see where the yeah there's a bit of a fire going on down there and when when it actually burns you actually put water on it so it just barely burns so there is that point that produces the maximum amount of smoke and here you see that really really thick so smoke to tell that chemically uh, you do not have the full oxidization process mm -hmm. of those organic substances to water and co2 but here you produce definitely you you inhibit the full uh, oxidization so that there are intermediate not fully oxidized substances called phenols mm -hmm. and those give all those aromas yeah so this whiskey is that uh, not whiskey this smoke <laughs> then goes up to a chamber a drying floor which I was not allowed to visit and there the malt is being dried the malt at the Port Ellen malting is being yeah malted in these bins first they are being uh, steeped so the malt the grain starts to grow and turns the starch into sugar and it has to be turned so otherwise it gets moldy and in these big drums there is a certain amount of level of the malt and here you see already see the uh, the cog wheels and the cog wheels turn these big drums they're really really old they're from the 60s or 70s so they're really massively produced and they turn very very slowly but they turn around so every grain sees the, the yeah the oxygen level on the top so it doesn't grow any mold if you look into it this is how it looks like it's about half or two-thirds filled and you see that all the little grains are trying to sprout and that's exactly what you what you want to have at, but at a certain point you want to stop it and you want to stop it with hot air but in back in the times they had to burn peat and that made it smoky and that's what you want to have today so that's where you stop the the malt from growing with the hot air produced from burning the peat yeah and uh, when you have these peat levels they vary a lot so it can go down to I don't know, 30 20 something like that or co can go as, even as high as 300 and these batches as like 300 they use for the octomore that's why the octomore has so, such uh, variation in the ppm levels at the port ellen malting they use these batches and they blend them together. So you weigh a batch and you uh, measure a batch, how much PPM in is in there, and then you blend it together so you get the, the right PPM level. And if you want to produce a very accurate number of PPM, you have to weigh it off more often and blend it more often. And that's what the Lagavulin distillery does. At Lagavulin, they get something uh, a batch with 40 and a batch with 60 and then they blend it together exactly to their measurement so they measure a lot of times and then they blend it together and yeah they keep it a bit of a secret how much they use i think at like a woolen it's about 45. yeah so there is a question from david mann what differences do you find between peated whiskey from isla and spirits from other regions example given springbank longrow or highland park well, that depends on the consistency of the peat. 
you've seen those roots on the top and this uh, buttery clay consistency in, in the bottom and each moor has a different consistency uh, and different species uh, of flora uh, growing on top of that moss and this brings different flavors into the peat so it depends on the peat you cut how the whiskey tastes mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay so um let's take the lagavulin so for right? we here uh, got a bottle out from uh, the shelf and that's that still shows this band roll this security band roll uh, which was omitted uh, a few years ago i think this is should be from 2017 and there is always uh, some comments that the old whiskies is there a code on it there's a code on it but does not show a year well this is l6 L it should be 16 L6 and this is L02 10 mm -hmm. I think it's cryptic yeah <laughs> uh, uh, and in former times uh, whiskey was selected from uh, the malls only 5 to 10 percent and then the rest goes to the blending industry and today most of the whiskey from the famous distilleries is going directly to the malt uh, so they have to produce with a much more consistency in their processes and in their work, in their cask management, uh, so that the whiskey today is better in average in quality, but they might have selected better casks in the past for the single malts. But between this one with the band roll and that uh, new one without it, I haven't found a difference. So, and uh, yeah but i don't think this one is very old i think it's a few years old yes maybe one of the last ones with the bandero mm -hmm. because this studio here is not isn't that old no i got yeah. this after way after the studio was built okay well it's very comfortable <laughs> for, for longer live streams here yeah. Now maybe we have we should a foot have rest. A, maybe we should have a two-hour live stream <laughs> again. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what you got? So this is Lagavulin. I have to enterprise myself a little bit. Uh, so this is Lagavulin. This is a massive, intense, complex aroma because this one is 16 years of age has a certain amount of sherry cask in it, which the others do not have. Have that smokiness, the sea spray, the sea, the rotten sea grass. So this is a, a full complex, more or less older aroma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's much more browned and you do already realize the sherry influence. So whereas the other ones were more of the bonfire ash type ones, um, this one is really a peat smoke, a smoke cellar, ham, sweet, sweet guy. Yeah, I really like it. So it's a a bit of a contrast to the other one. I do like the combination of sherry and peat smoke, and that's mm -hmm. why I, I do love the Lagavulin 16 a lot. Mm -hmm. And there was there's a, a bigger one, the a Distillers Edition, mm -hmm. a lot of peat sherry in it. Yeah, there was a question. Um, do the different distilleries, uh, different peat sources for different distilleries at the Port Allen Maltings? Um, I've actually had uh, a guy at the distillery talk to me, and now that guy is the master distiller at, um, Artback. Uh, at Artback and he's a really bright guy. He, he actually lives on Isla and he's a really Isla dude. And uh, no, no, you only get different levels of peat smoke at Port Allen Maltings. Port Allen Maltings, as he said, these big drums, they are an industrial malting facility. So there are no special orders. You can order a truck full of 
uh, malted barley, you can order at 40 ppm, you can order at 60 ppm or certain levels. They have different things you can order, but truckload and you have to give a number and that's what you get. And if you want to go into more detail, then uh, please be careful. I'm going to tell you how you do that. So, and thank you to Brandon Bay for a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so, cheers. Cheers. Mm hmm. It runs smooth into your mouth. It's only 43%. So the alcohol isn't that strong. We have more the flavor, the juiciness, the friendliness in your mouth, and then it starts and then it glows. It burns in your mouth. A wonderful reward, a long aftertaste. Yeah, a little bit of ham as well in it. Yeah. Mm. Some, mm. ah, some salt, sorry, mm. some salt. Remembrance of salt. Even if you distill, the uh, the salt won't go over the stills. But there might be some sea spray at the casks, or it's just a irritation of my tasting buds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really do love it. Um, there is a big ham influence in that, and the ham is. Mm, we already said it, and in, in German stream. Um, you know when that ham is is really a bit of a, has a sweetness going in under the ham. Foul. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually that there is terms in the Italian language for when the the ham actually gets a little bit foul and a little bit sweetness. And some people like that as a, yeah, what is it, a deli? Uh, yeah, a, a delicatess uh, mm -hmm. as a specialty. Yeah, but we have a few guys who who have already said what they do have in their, in their bottle. So smoking bonfire with sweet wine, Fleur BX, um, uh, Gotthard Benz, brown sugar, raisins, sherry fruitness to have behind the smoke in the Lagavulin 16. Patrick Osberg, uh, smoky uh, yolk, um, mouth-watering burnt bacon. Yeah, these guys are from Germany. <laughs> they've, bought a, they've bought our bottles, but it's, it's really nice to have a, a chat with people who have the bottle in front of them. Mm. So Rem said yes. He tried all of them and gives quite a, a condensed picture of that. I, I can, well, I see that quite quite the same way. Hmm. Mm. What I do like about this Artbeck 16, eh, not Artbeck, like a Wolin 16 is it's really round. The art bag was really a bit more sharp and fresh and that kind of thing. But uh, the Lagavulin is, is really, really... Mm. So, you have more. So, how do you get to your specific way of um, peat smoke into your malt? And that is, you do your own malting. And how do you do your own malting? You do it the old-fashioned way. And the old-fashioned way is with a malting floor. So you steep your, your malt, your grain, and then you spread it out and let it germinate. And while it germinates, the bottom one is really likely to grow molds, so you have to turn it. You can take a shovel or you can take one of these <laughs> rakes and rake them manually to get air into them. And so there they will grow and not grow any molds. And when they've grown sufficiently, you want to dry them to stop the germination and what you do is then you do that over a peat smoke fire how do you do the fire in a kiln kiln is just a scottish fancy word for oven <laughs> it's really just an oven that looks like that and you see already see the smoke and it starts to burn and when it started to burn just like in the other oven at the factory at uh, Port Ellen, you take a hose and you hose it down and then you get this incomplete oxidization, these phenols in the peat smoke. If it's empty, it looks like that. It's just really a regular old oven. And when it's filled, you see 
um, that it burns. And here you see they are using just the top layer. And this top layer is very rooty and produces just the flavors they want to have. So it, so this is the way you can make your own style of whiskey. But unfortunately, it's not very efficient. So it's very cost intensive. And also it, it's not very environmentally friendly because you use up more peat than in the uh, big industrial processing per mold you get out. The hot air and smoke rises and you come to the drying floor. This is where you spread out your mold again and let it dry over this hot air and smoke. And it becomes a smoky, steamy mixture. Really bad for camera, so I didn't go in there. And also really bad for the lungs of people that have to go in there and turn that stuff. Today you all wear masks like not the mask we're wearing today, but really proper masks with, uh, I think they have a, a hose or I don't know. I don't think they have an oxygen uh, container there, but they get it from outside. So it's really a not good environment. Back in the days, these guys who went in there and turned that, they get an extra bottle of whiskey. <laughs> and yeah, so and that hot air becomes hot steam and that steam smoke mixture then rises to the top and you already see it's uh, tilted so we're at the very top level and that goes then through a chimney and that goes out yeah into the isla air and that's why it really smells in some re re uh, regions of mm -hmm. isla i think they got an exception from the uh, european community <laughs> to have these <laughs> fine dusts emitting in the environment oh yeah still yeah. <laughs> well, you should be allowed to do that usually okay but if you look at that picture very closely you see a bit of a blue blackish thing yeah leaving that chimney on the right and you want to have a really big chimney because you have really a lot of smoke going out there but a big chimney you could have the rain that is constantly there in scotland uh, go into your drying floor and make everything wet again so ringing everything so you put a top on it and that's uh, the pagoda that we are seeing today yeah really good thing but be careful also that you have these little shapes at the bottom that's because wind sometimes comes sideways from isla mm. and the rain could go in there as well fun fact the uh, storms are really quite big at isla and the top of the Bowmore Pagoda uh, actually off, flew yeah. off and they <laughs> found it <laughs> not miles away, but yeah, <coughs> half a mile away or something like that. Uh, yeah. there, Tom Friedrichshain asks, come all the peated whiskey from Scotland. Well, m Scotland is famous for its peated whiskey, but there are in the meantime, peated whiskey from Ireland as well. There are some American distilleries producing as well peated whiskey. And the most weird whiskey I had was from Iceland. Mm -hmm. And they had sheep uh, dung. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some, some good smoky whiskeys <laughs> from Germany. And also, if you come to Bamberg ever, um, there is a smoky beer in Germany because what you can do with uh, the malted barley, you can either make whiskey or you can make beer out of it. But be careful, it's, it's a mouthful. <laughs> if you have a little glass of really smoky um, substance to drink, that's manageable and, and delicious. But if you have a big jug of a Maaskrug, uh, then it's... So it's a bit tougher to have one one liter of this uh, smoky beer going in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's have a sequence. A sequence, yes. <coughs> and the sequence actually changed for me a little no, bit. No, not for me. Not for you? Yeah. You still? Still Lagavulin is the first. Mm -hmm. And the second is Artback. Mm -hmm. And the third is... The Port Charlotte. Port Charlotte. So if you have um, a sequence, if you have tried all of them, write them in. This is yeah. one two, three, so if your sequence would be the one from Horst, it would be three, one, two. For me, it, I had three, one, two as well for the German take, and uh, now it changed a little bit, now it's three, two, one. Uh -huh. okay. So I, I really did love, uh, it's it's hard because I do love the Arbeck 10 as well. So 
for me, it's it's <laughs> like like uh, they're both second place. <laughs> David Mann, I had the sheep dung whiskey. Highly not recommended. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> three one two water. Two three one. Uh, three two one. Oh, okay. Smokey the beer. <laughs> Good. So yeah, that was it. Mm -hmm. um, we are continuing. Oh, there, there are more coming in. One, two, three. Three equal two equals three. <laughs> That's one. not medically correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he he did it twice. <laughs> it's the same guy. Uh, okay, so I think we had everybody. Um, we will continue with the uh, Highland, or not the Highland, the regions from Scotland series and we will continue on the 6th of November 2020 at uh, 8 o'clock p.m. Central European Standard Time but yeah. winter time then probably it's so, standard time <laughs> equals winter but, time uh, if you want to know when that is in your region go to whiskey.com slash live there is the event there you have to scroll a bit down and you click on the event and then it tells you when it is in your time so go to whiskey.com slash live and you will find out when that tasting is there next time we will have the glen morangi 10 years the tomato 12 and the delwini 15 years so if you have these whiskies at home or you can get them anywhere it's uh, it's really fun to have it while we um we do the live tasting get them and we will try them together and yeah, discuss uh, the taste and, and the flavors of it. And it's always worth to buy them now and uh, <laughs> have them at home while uh, you can't leave. Or, or you, you <laughs> can buy now the whiskies you don't have from this live stream and then see the live stream again mm -hmm. uh, together with us. Uh, always fun or if you do not have the time at, at noon or, or two past noon uh, uh, to have follow the live stream then you can always have the live stream uh, again so there actually there are more live stream visits afterwards than live mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but today we already had 120 views so mm, nice thank you very much for watching if you'd give me a thumbs up that would be really great and yeah, do you have anything else no so yeah thanks and good night <laughs>